And this is the central idea behind a quantum computer, right? It was actually first hypothesized by Richard Feynman, one of our favorite physicists, in a 1982 paper. The paper was titled Simulating Physics. It's an incredible paper, paper that's so forward-thinking, and it's something very much in the style of Feynman. He, he builds it from first principles, and he asks, like, okay, what if I want to um, simulate a quantum system? Right. Okay? What would that take? And here's the math that he does. He says, suppose I have an interacting system of n quantum particles, okay? And I want to simulate all of that. Can I do this with a classical computer? Pretty soon it gets way, way out of hand, okay? And here's why. In a classical computer, well, you would just have one thing and then you can decide whether it's a zero or a one, but you can just keep track of each of the bits. You need to store n bits, that's n different transistors that are storing a zero or a one. If you want to start doing quantum systems now, combinatorically, it goes insane, right? Because just let's imagine two quantum systems, right? Like two electrons that are spin up or spin down. You actually have to keep track of four different complex numbers, okay? You have to keep track of the spin up, spin down. You have to keep track of the spin down, spin down, and then spin up, spin down, spin down, spin up, right? That's four different complex numbers that you got to keep track of. So with three, now I got to keep track of all eight mm. of these spin systems, yes. right? And with n, it becomes two to the n. Two to the n different numbers to really fully characterize a quantum system because each of these each of these individual spin states are themselves distinct. And so I need a number for each of these distinct spin states. If you scale with the number of bits, the amount of stuff that you can store in a classical computer becomes linear, but the amount of stuff you can store in a quantum computer bec becomes exponential, Mitchell. right? Because a quantum computer by design is storing all of the little values for each of the superposition of these states. So it was a very simple, simple argument that Feynman made. And he did a, this back of the envelope calculation. He's like, well, if you need two to the n numbers, if you want just like 40 interacting particles with two states, that's two to the 40. And it's a trillion bits that you need in your RAM, not in your hard disk. Right, right. You need in your RAM because you're you're messing with all of those numbers, yes. right? In, a, in terms of computation, yeah. protein will have like on the order of 100 to 400 atoms that many interacting quantum states, right? Already at like two to the 200, you're getting to 10 to the 66. That's an insane number. There's only about 10 to the 80 atoms in the universe, right? So like what? Each atom in your universe is now, you know, yeah, like you can't make transistors. Yeah, it's not feasible. That was the main impetus. And it was sort of introduced by Feynman in, in the 1980s to start thinking about 